everyone and welcome back to my channel. So if you don't know me, my name is Palmyre. I am French, but I moved to London six years ago with my cat Sherlock. We called him like that because at the time we found him, we were watching the BBC show Sherlock and let's just say it like that. They're really the same. There's a lot of similarities between them. So a little bit more about myself. When I feel down, I love watching Ghost Adventures. It's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, I just love it. I binged watch it many, many times. I've only started watching The X-Files not long ago because it's finally on Disney Plus. So I've started watching it and I'm obsessed. And I do a little dance every time during the theme song. Just one more information about me. I love, 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 love mac and cheese and cauliflower wing. And the best place in London is Blondie's. Shout out to Charlie because his mac and cheese and his cauliflower wings are just the best. So if you happen to be in London, East London, just go there. You'll thank me. So now let's go back to the topic. So if you watched last video, I'm really sorry it took me that long to do this video. I was supposed to be on a break from work and took on a gig so it gave me a bit less of brain time and brain space to be able to read the book record and then edit so i'm really sorry about that and i will try to be better for the next video i promise probably won't do a book so that i can record like faster and i'll be able to put it out there let's try it like that but yeah anyway if you remember last time i said that i would review the jack the ripper case book i'm sorry i won't Nah, it's just kidding. Get used to those bad jokes though, because that's, yeah, I can't do better than that. Anyway, just to go back on the book, this time I've got notes, so I'm not going to mumble or not, you know, talk shit. It's just going to be nicer, you know, there will be portions and everything. So, here's the book. It's here, the Jack the Ripper, the case book. And you can find it almost everywhere you go and there's like a Jack the Ripper thing. So you can find it at the museum, you can find it at a dungeon, and you can find it probably at like gift shops in London. I don't remember why I got it. I'm not sure I put it in London. I wish I had. I wish I remembered. I mean, you know, I got it. So what matters? I don't remember if my ex got it for me for like either Christmas or my birthday. If he did, you can burn in hell. The book is like hard cover and you've got like a magnet on the side to close it so that you keep everything in. And there's 63 pages in total but only 56 pages with content on it. It's got loads of pictures to illustrate what they're talking about. So it's, it's really interesting to put faces on people that they show the places and everything. So that's what it looks like inside so you've got like nice pictures and then you've got four pockets with documents in so that's the first one then you've got the second one then you've got the third one here and the fourth one anyway it's 1999 pounds which i think is quite fair with everything that you've got it's a nice reading it's not too hard to read so i've done a bit of research because there's a really really good website for people who like jack the ripper called the case book to see if it was related it's not it's not related in any way so it's just same name but nothing to do with it i've looked up the author so there's not much about him that i know but i've discovered that he does some virtual jack the ripper tour so you can book them online and you don't move from your place it's just on zoom and you get a 195 page pages ebook with it so it's like 12 pounds on the website it says it's seven pounds but then if you go click to book it's 12 pounds and it's every day at 7 p.m london time and i think i'm going to do it and i think that probably it could be a good third video to do the tour record myself when i do the tour to see mm, what i think about it and then do a review video about like what i thought about it they also had a quiz on their Twitter and uh, let me tell you that the questions are pretty hard so I have some more studying to do. My light started flickering. Maybe it's a ghost. <laughs> anyway, so just to go back on the book, what's inside. So you've got an introduction. Then you've got a nice page about the people of the Abyss, where they talk about the people of East End. Then you've got something about the woman of East End, which should have been the museum, <laughs> but it's not. So they talk about the different stories about the woman and the evangelist, which also gives like a nice background. They talk about the policing in that time and You've got Aberline here, Inspector Frederick Aberline Bay, like I like to call him. No, but look at that moustache though. Look at that moustache. So it introduced you as to who was on the case of Jack the Ripper. It doesn't really tell much more. Then you've got pages about the murders themselves. So you've got Martha Tabram and Emma Smith 
then Marini goes and I'm not showing the pages because I don't want to show the pictures of the dead woman you've got Annie Chapman then you've got a page on leather apron the first suspect that we had on Jack and they tell the story and the problems around that suspect which is pretty interesting then you've got and that's one of my favorite part of that book and it's pretty rare that we talk about that but they talk about Jack the Ripper as a social reformer and that my friend is making me really happy during the time of Jack the Ripper the living conditions in the East End Whitechapel were horrendous and if you know that in 1887 there was a big protest and people were starting to be not happy about the living conditions so these pages tell you about the fact that during the murders people starting to realize that poor people need to be treated better and the government needs to do something about that here on the left george bernard Shaw, he's the one who said that jack the ripper could be a social reformer he said in the newspaper the star he theorized about the killer's motive saying sir will you allow me to make a comment on the success of the whitechapel murder in calling attention for a moment to the special question private enterprise has succeeded where socialism failed whilst we conventional social democrats were wasting our time on education agitation and organization some independent genius has taken the matter in hand and by simply murdering and disemboweling four women converted the proprietary press to an inept sort of communism so basically he was making a joke saying that social democrats have tried the nice way maybe they needed someone to murder four poor women to get the attention of the public on the living conditions in the west for them to make a change i mean not much changed even the queen asked for the streets of whitechapel to have better light that's it she just wanted better light it's great she intervened and asked for light you know she still commented about the living condition of the area but just asking for lights really really i mean this is why french people and royals they don't really get along anyway that's two pages that are really interesting though if you want to know more about that and well we'll do a video about it maybe because <laughs> who am i if i don't do a video about that anyway then you've got a page about elizabeth stride then one about catherine Eddowes, and you've got two pages about the writing on the wall sorry my phone stopped working so i had to reassess so yeah we've got the writing on the wall like we said the letters mary jane kelly and then you've got more murders where they explain that maybe there's more murders then you've got the question did jack the reaper show medical knowledge so that's an interesting one mcnoten's memorandum if you don't read that book you don't get that information i mean you can get that information somewhere else but it's good that in that type of book you've got that then you've got the different suspects so i'm not going to go through all the different suspects like let's say you've got like a third maybe a bit less than that like a quarter of the book maybe even less than that like that of the book so that's still a good number you've got like each suspect has two pages the address walter seeker and they trash patricia conwell for her book and what she says and why she said that walter seeker could be the killer so so then it ends on why Jack was never caught and then you've got the press and the reaper which I think it's quite late in the book to have something talking about that aspect and then you've got Jack the Reaper, London today and that's it I don't know if everything should be placed in that order but I'm going to show you the different pockets what it's got inside and we can discuss that so the first pocket has three documents so the first document is the police report of Polly Nichols murder so it's pretty interesting to read the second one is the report of Elizabeth Wright's murder so again it's pretty interesting that one is really long but at least the handwriting is not too bad like if you can see the handwriting is pretty good same for that one and the last one is the one for Catherine Eddowes her documents are separated in two different pockets so you've got in that pocket the report of her murder and then if you go into the other pocket you've got three other documents let me take them up one i will show you in a second you've got the report of her murder another one and an explanation as to why the writing on the wall has been erased before everyone could see it the night of the double event when the police were looking for suspects or for the murderer on the street they found a piece of apron 
from Catherine Edo's and they also found a writing on the wall but the police decided to erase it as soon as possible and there's no picture of it there's some writing of it but the spelling differs between the different reports then you've got Charles Warren's report about why he decided to erase the writing on the wall and the last document is the famous Dear Boss letter. So it's the one that gave Jack his name. Third pocket. You've got seven documents. So for some of you who know a bit about Jack the Ripper, you know that there was loads of letters that have been received during the time. So it's just a few examples of some of the ones that have been received. So you've got four of them in there. One of them is really exciting yes it gets the little done so the first one is a postcard that apparently could be written by the same as the dear boss letter then you've got another one then you've got another postcard and on that one you've got a drawing of who jack could be and then you've got the from hell letter which is if you know a bit about jack that letter is one of the staple so it's been received by george lusk so he was at the top of Neighbourhood Watch. It's not the name, but that's to explain what it was. And he received that letter with a kidney in a box. He put that a bit aside and then decided to get it sampled, tested and sent to the police. You can see that letter at the Royal London Hospital Museum. It's a copy, so it's probably that one from the book that you will see, but still interesting to see. And then in that pocket, you have MacNaughton's report. It's pretty nice to discover new things, even if it's just a attraction ride book. So it's really interesting. And so you've got the report here on one of the suspects, Thomas Crebush. And then, which is exciting because well you know about Inspector Oberlein and so here is his report of Mary Jane Kelly's murder. The mystery around Oberlein is pretty interesting and then you've got the witness statement George Hutchinson basically he saw Mary Kelly go with a man the night of her murder and so he describes that in the notes. And so the last one only has five documents they're more graphic documents than actual documents to read from. The first one is a letter from Jack from Philadelphia, just to show that people from around the world would send letters. You know, to talk about the fact that we don't know if the letters are real or anything. Then the second one is a letter talking about the fact that they're not going to give rewards to people with information. So you've got two sides. It's mainly to just, you know, illustrate the pages about why the police didn't catch Jack. Then you've got a police handbill to try to find the killer. So I really want to go to Whitechapel with it and take pictures of that handbill in front of the different Scott just for my Instagram because uh, I think that that's a cool idea. So I really want to do that. And then you've got the New York Herald just to show that everyone was talking about Jack the Ripper. I would want to just say that it's the London edition. So that makes sense for me that they're talking about Jack. And also it's not about Jack. In 1889, a trunk was found, the head was off, the legs were cut off, this is the report of that. It kind of tries to link it to Jack the Ripper, saying that it could be a Whitechapel murder, because it, the body was found in Whitechapel, but that's about it. It's just to show that international press was talking about Jack. And the last one, which is pretty new, is from the Illustrated Police News, and it's just about the double event, so it shows Elizabeth Stride, Berner Street victim, and then the images of how they were found. That is a pretty cool memorabilia to have. So my favourite of the documents that you can find is all the police reports. I think it's pretty nice to be able to read them. Also the Dear Boss letter, the From Hell letter, a Berlin's report, even though if it's still a police report. The witness testimony, because it brings more information. The police handbill in the newspaper. Probably some of them I would frame. My dream is to have a wall with like, if you go to the museum, you know what I'm talking about. And if you watch It's Always Sunny, you will know what I'm talking about. It's a wall with like the different pictures and different suspects and like trying to find who he is. So that would be great to have you know, an investigation room. Anyway, for now, I just have that room. So I can't put everything on the wall. Probably when I have more space, I will probably try to put some of the memorabilia of the book in frames and try to find some others. So I would probably need a second book. The problem with my version, I would need to look at other versions to see if it's the same. There's typos, so it seems a bit weird for a book that you would see in a library or in a shop to have that many typos. There's one on Catherine Eddowes, so I'm trying to hide the picture, but like you can see there's a typo there, the square shouldn't be there. There's also a big typo that 
that if you're like writing a book about Jack the Ripper and you're making a typo on one of the suspect's name. So for Aaron Kosminski, that's a typo. It's not Aaron Kosminski. I can't even pronounce it. It's Aaron Kosminski. It seems a bit low budget. You would expect better, but maybe it's because it's an old version and now the new versions don't have typos. In general, I think there's also a bit of a lack of a consistency in the book. As in some of the victims, you've got their lives in the main pages. For the other victims, it's just a little square, like here for Holly Nichols. Also, I have a problem with the names of the victims in the book. Mary Ann Nichols was known as Holly Nichols or Marianne. In the books, it's only Holly Nichols. It's not a lot, but it's weird. You would assume that they would go a bit further. And the only pictures of the victims that you have is of them after the murder. So it's only gruesome pictures. If you've seen the pictures, you would know what I mean. It's kind of sad because pictures of them alive exist, apart from probably Mary Jane Kelly. So it's a bit sad that the only image that you have is her butchered from Catherine Edo's. It's her when she's standing on the wall because that's what they used to do in Mortal is at the time it's like they would put people against the wall and take a picture so that's that's how you see Catherine Edo's is like standing on the wall and you've got all the stitches that were done on her to try to make her look presentable so I think that is probably one of the points that I would be like mm, it could have been better like it would have been more respectful I feel to have more than just that little square on the page about their lives and have pictures of them alive because I feel like that's really missing and as someone who I know that at the beginning I used to be like I want to see the gruesome pictures just show me the murders when I did my first tour I was quite excited to go there it's just that now I've grown up already and I feel like they deserve a bit more respect than just being seen as a dead corpse and a gruesome murder so yeah i feel like that could have been better i feel like they could have done at least three pages or four pages like one about their lives and one about maybe the murder and that's why i meant about this is annie chapman at the mortuary if you look closely you can see the stitches at the throat there's nice pictures of annie chapman existing that could have been put in the book instead of just showing three pictures of the street where she was found dead and one picture of her dead that one is Hanbury Street where she was found dead and then that picture is the inside of Hanbury Street and then that one is again Hanbury Street 29. That's my main issue with the book is that there's a lack of consistency in the way it's presented and in general the victims deserved a bit more of respect just to be you know treated as human being and not just as a corpse. I hope you're not hearing that siren because this is going to be great on the video. <laughs> Another problem, some of the reports are pretty hard to read. The handwriting is a mess and it would have been nice to have more pages to the book, probably maybe at the end, during the index credits, to have just the different letters transcript so that you can have the letter on one side or the report on one side and read the transcript so that you know what you're reading. Also, another issue with the book is that the pockets are great, they like that, but they can easily damage. That one you can see it's been torn here. So that's the little problem, like sometimes when you put the document back in, you can open the pocket by mistake. But it's not too big deal, like you just need to be careful with your book, which if you saw what I did with the one from Patricia Cornwell, you will see that I don't take care of my books, which is pretty bad. Another point, I think the museum is based on the book. If you go to the museum, you will see the memorabilia there, which I'm not sure, like, it's a bit of a stretch for me to say that. It's, you know, I don't want to accuse them of anything because they already have their own problems, like when they open, they had people against them and everything. But I feel like the museum, for most of the thing, is what's in that book. They don't have more memorabilia and you can recognize the printing and the paper used for the memorabilia. Apart from that, I feel like it's a good book in general. It's a ride. It's an attraction book. Let's just put it this way. It's a good introduction to the world of Jack the Ripper and the victims, even though there could be a bit more about the victims. So yeah, I think that if you want to know more about Jack the Ripper, or if you don't know anything about Jack the Ripper, you've always been interested or want to discover, or you know a bit about him and the murders, and you want to know a bit more, I think the book is great. I think that's a good book. I would recommend it. And I feel like if you really want to learn a bit more, you can read all the reports and it gives you more details. So I feel like if you just treat that book as in, yeah, it's a book, I've got memorabilia, but I don't really read them, you're missing out on some points. Like George Hutchinson. Yeah, I said it right. 
George Hutchinson's testimony is really interesting to read because it talks about the conversation that he overheard Mary Jane Kelly have with that man and it's something that it's not addressed in the book at any point so it's really interesting to read i use it on my side when i do give tools i have it like as in the notes about the murders because sometimes not everything is here i mean it's not like i've done a lot of them probably three two of them were dates and uh, let me tell you didn't end well it's not because of the tool though it's not because of the tool <laughs> The tour was great. The date went well, but after that, guys, I see to not see me again. Happens. But yeah, so I use it for my tours. So my friends here, if I ever take you on a tour, well, you will see this. I hope the new versions have less typos because it's still, mm, you know, doesn't seem too professional. Seeing me, I make typo all the time. And yeah, get it. I I'm not selling it. I don't have any codes or anything, but like it passed the test compared to others that I would not recommend. And we all know which one I'm talking about. Yes, I'm talking about you, Patricia Cornwell. Your book is shit. Oh, they talk about it. They trash it too. And that is it. I think that next video will be the review of the digital tour from the author, Richard Jones. So I will record myself watching the tour. You won't have the whole reaction of the tour, but I will edit to see how I feel about it. And then at the end, I will say if it's worth it or not, if it was better than the actual tour that I did. And yeah, that's it. Get the book if you like, check the reaper and I will see you soon. I don't know when because I don't want to say, hey, see you next week if I don't do next week. So yeah, I'll see you very soon. And in the meantime, take care. And yeah, have fun. Live life and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.